worth. Okay, great. Do you have it? Yes. Okay, so what I've been doing, first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Simona Gradinaru. Uh, I'm a data scientist for quite a few years already. And I've recently started a challenge be with being a blogger. Ines basically um, challenged me to start a blog, although I've been planning to that to do it for quite a while. And since I have quite some posts, I think five or six of them already, I said, okay, maybe I can go further and investigate what's going on there because I have also synchronized my, my blog with Google Analytics, with a Google Analytics account. And this is what I've been learning and this is what I've been finding out by digging through my data and I wanted to share it with you. So let's go further. Um, there are quite some packages for mining uh, Google Analytics data directly in R. Uh, one of those, I think it's basically the most popular one, it's uh, Google Analytics R, um, which basically connects uh, to, to the Google Analytics API and allow us to download the data in R and manipulate it and perform any statistical analysis. But uh, the, the overall purpose of it, it's uh, um, to understand, to improve, and of course, optimize the website per performance. So this is what I've been using, the Google Analytics R package. So let me take you through what I want to discuss tonight. Um, I have a few lines of code directly in the presentation and I want you to explain and to uh, dig into how we can connect our end Google Analytics API. Um, and then I have a section about data overview, which means what type of data we have in Google Analytics and how can we leverage that into our own advantage, but it's basically just going through whatever it's available out there and how can we use it. And later I'm going directly to my case study on my, on my blog, data visualization. I have a few data insights that I've been finding out and some further steps. It's basically some directions of action that I want to take further after uh, doing this analysis. But first of all, let's see, how do we actually connect R and Google Analytics API? So I've been using, as I already mentioned, uh, Google Analytics R package, uh, which basically uh, requires three major steps. One of those is connecting R and Google Analytics using this command. It's basically just authentic authenticating into Google Analytics. That's all it does. It basically links to your um, Google profile and you need, to, you need to log in first into a browser. And then you need to um, uh, list all your Google Analytics account if it's the case. I mean, I do have more than one Google Analytics account because I've been practicing a lot with my, with my blog and I have a version of tests and a version official live. So I had two versions, so I had, to, um, I had to extract only one of those. So this is what I've been doing. I've been taking the ID because that's how you actually need to, need to connect into Google Analytics. You need your ID. Basically your website has a Google Analytics ID and that's the field that will allow you to, to connect to that specific data. So after taking the ID, the very last step is downloading the data, which is performed using the Google Analytics command in here, which requires quite a few things, but all of them are basically quite straightforward. It requires, first of all, an ID, which I've been taking from here because it's confidential and I didn't want you to see it. So uh, it's hidden currently. Um, and so you need an ID, you need a list of metrics, um, basically the variables that you want to have uh, downloaded and you want to investigate further. Uh, I will also take you through what's available in Google Analytics, but for this example, I've been using just users and sessions. You can either use a single metric or you can use multiple metrics in a vector as, uh, as I did here. 
And then you need dimensions which are basically uh, the categorical variables or, or in this case you can have date or you can have device category or you can have multiple ones i i will also take you through those ones and because the google analytics is a time series uh, it uh, it registers data by day uh, you also need a date range for this example, my blog, my blog was launched on September uh, 11, 2020. And I've been using the, that range from the very moment when it, when it was launched until basically yesterday. That's what it, what it says here. Um, what happens is that in case you're not familiar with Google Analytics data, it's not 100% real time in terms of um, whatever traffic you have today, it will be registered at the end of today. So I will see it tomorrow. That's why I cannot actually download data from, from today. That's one of the examples. It's quite straightforward. It's just taking users and sessions um, by day on a daily basis. Um, I have done this multiple times. You can use you can use a lot of variables, a lot of metrics. Uh, the only problem is that sometimes it limits you to a specific number of cases. So if you have twenty dimensions, maybe I want to have a lot of variables in here. At some moment, it will restrict to the access. So you will need to have only nine dimensions at a time or something specific. And so another example is that maybe I want to have Google Analytics data by device category. That would be another way of downloading data, right? So it will require exactly the same command, Google Analytics. You will take, you, you need an ID, so we will take the, exactly the same ID, a date range. That could be also uh, modified later. Uh, the metrics, and if you want device category, you just need to put it here into dimension. So I have date and device category. So basically, what you need to you need, what you need to um, understand from from this is that there are basically two or maybe three steps. You need to authentic authenticate first. You need to um, you need to understand which which is your Google Analytics ID, and according to that, you can further download um, download the data. Okay, that being said, um, let's see what we have actually in Google Analytics. So I put in here some theoretical backgrounds. Maybe, maybe it's too much, but I I just. I had to understand everything from scratch. So I'm doing the same right now. I'm just sharing whatever I've been learning during the past uh, few weeks. So basically there are three, um, three types of um, numerical variables in Google Analytics. Basically, whenever someone, um, whenever someone visits a website, Google Analytics tracks three different things. One is the visitor which is basically a unique user, a person actually that visits the site and whatever it does on the site, maybe it buys something, maybe it just reads as it, as it is in, in my blog or um, something else. And then there's um, something else that it's called session, which is the time spent uh, active on the website. So the visitor spends maybe 30 seconds, maybe five minutes, maybe more, that's a session. And then of course, intuitively a page, but there are two different use cases in here because um, for instance, in my case, um, the page view is basically my, uh, any, any user comes and just reads my blog. It just accesses the page and does nothing else. It just reads. But there could be some, some more use cases to that. Perhaps um, there could be a website um, where you can click on a button. So that's an interactive website and Google Analytics could track also um, the clicks you've been doing there, whether you bought something or um, how much time you spent and so on. So basically that's what Google Analytics uh, actually tracks down. Um, I've been talking about the variables uh, available in Google Analytics. So I've been adding 
everything I found out in here. So there could be users and sessions and page views, exactly as I mentioned before. Um, it also tracks bounces, which are the visitors that leave the website after just visiting one page. It's basically something bad. If someone just came and didn't stay on your website, it's typically something bad. You need to optimize that in order to minimize the bounces rate. Um, and then those ones um, are basically um, numerical variables. And then you have a lot of descriptive variables that could help you understand your audience or um, how, can you, how can you improve your website. For instance, um, the device that people use for visiting the website. And in here, there are three different categories, desktop, mobile, and tablet. And you can have the um, all those uh, all those numerical variables divided by by each of those. You can you can also track uh, users' location uh, by continent and country. And there's also a city, but I think it's it's not one hundred percent complete because not everyone actually allows their location. So a continent and country um, are good enough, at least for my purposes right now. Um, and it also tracks uh, website traffic by channel, whether um, people um, accessed or visited your website um, through social media or organic, maybe they just um, Google it and they somehow arrived on your page, on your website, or direct whether people have actually, um, they just knew the, the address and they just typed it into, into the browser. And there are two things that I haven't been using so far, but I think they are mostly using, used in marketing and um, um, other aggregated, um, aggregated fields. Um, basically, it's campaign metrics and metrics by segment of users. Campaign metrics refers basically to whatever you have a a uh, marketing campaign or you've been um, you've been launching an event and you just want to see uh, what's your website performance after doing that event or during that event or uh, anything related to that. And there's also metrics by segment. Uh, Google Analytics actually comes with a um, template for some segments, uh, for instance, mobile users or desktop users, or, or I think iOS users and so on. But at the same time, it also allows you to create your own segment. Maybe you want to look at a specific niche of people, maybe, I don't know, iPhone users from Bucharest, let's say, or anything else, you can, you can add it in there and then just track your website performance by, by those segments of users. So that's what is avail what is available in uh, in Google Analytics, and I've been using quite a few a few of those ones. Um, okay, so that was the introductionary part. Uh, let's uh, let's move on to the case study and see what I've been finding about my blog. Um, what I wanted to do so. Um, I want to step back for a moment because it's really funny what I've been doing in the last uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, I'm all I'm, I'm at the same time I'm playing two different roles. I'm the client, so I basically want to um, have some answers about how's my blog performing, and I just want to find out some some key, key drivers or key, key things that I need to improve. But I also want it to be simple. So I want to be as straightforward as, as, and as insightful as possible. But at the same time, despite um, alongside being the, being the client, I'm also the data scientist that tries to, uh, tries to understand those, uh, those questions and to respond to those ones. And here's how my presentation was actually structured. So I've been um, addressing myself some questions uh, about something that I, some things that I wanted to, to find out about my blog. And then I just try to, to answer them as, um, as good as possible. So first of all, how did the sessions evolve through time? That was one of my uh, key questions. So here's a time series plot basically. 
And you can see that, so I started the blog right here, somewhere in September uh, 2020, and here's uh, February data. So I have just a couple of spikes in here, which are, this, this was the very, very first post on my blog. This was the second, this was the third, the fourth, and the fifth. So I have five posts on my blog. But the interesting part is that they didn't came just because I posted. They they came so those um, those sessions are actually um, how many how many people actually accessed my blog and uh, my posts later. We will see. So basically, what happened? I've been studying this chart, and whenever I have a spike in here, it's basically because I shared my post on Facebook which is quite interesting because I was kind of anticipating that. So um, I, I need to dig down uh, a bit into that and I need to uh, be more active on Facebook. And I'm also sharing on LinkedIn, but sometimes I'm doing, at the, I'm doing both at the same time. So during the same day. So it's kind of difficult to me to um, draw a line in between those two. But it's definitely the social channel that it's driving me those uh, those spikes in here. And I can also say that perhaps I've been losing some popularity because my last post weren't so um, weren't so uh, popular in here. It seems like I've been losing some popularity, so I need to I need to figure out a way and um, come up with some more insightful and interesting interesting post. Um, okay, so that was about uh, that was about an evolution of time. Uh, but I was also interested in finding out which are the most popular posts on my blog. So I've been looking, of course, uh, by by post by page, and I've been finding out that the home page is actually the most popular page. But it also has a meaning because the theme that I have on my on my blog is actually um, whenever you want to go back to a different post, you need to switch through the home page. So maybe artificially or not so artificially, it will uh, increase somehow the popularity of the home page. And another thing that I've been looking at is that um, exactly as I mentioned before, it seems like I've I've been losing some popularity because uh, the posts have quite fewer um, fewer uh, visualizations from from the users. So I need to figure out a way of uh, increasing that. Well, when being a blogger, uh, you also uh, address yourself all the time this question: When is the best time to post? And I've been trying to answer this question by looking at the day of the week. And here's what I found out. It seems like Monday, it's a very, very good day for posting for people to read. Um, it's also something that I noticed because I think I have two, two, uh, two posts on my blog that have been shared on Monday and have been very well received from, from my audience. So I think I will be going further with posting either on Monday or on Friday. It seems like people don't read that much during the weekend. So Sunday and Saturday are down below. So I need to, I need to stop posting during the weekends and focus more on Monday or Friday or maybe just Tuesday in here. Those seems like uh, will ensure to me some great, um, great exposure. Okay, next. What are the most frequent devices used for visiting the blog? Because I've been using a specific theme uh, for, for my blog and I don't think I've been testing it that much on, the, on some different devices. So I need to dig down into that. But here's what I found out here. Uh, it seems like I have quite a lot of sessions with the mobile devices. So one thing for me as a blogger means that I need to double check how my blog appears on a, on a mobile device, on a phone maybe. And I need to make sure it's user friendly and it doesn't have any problems because a lot of the traffic it's, it's through the mobile. 
Um, desktop is half as popular as mobile, which is interesting, but uh, I think there are quite some people that are still um, are still using desktops for uh, reading my blog. So that's that's good for for the desktop version. I think my website is very well optimized, so I'm confident there. But tablets, I don't have that much that many users uh, on a tablet, so I don't think I will be focusing on that any further. OK, so if I've been looking by um, by device type, I also looked by browser. So in the previous slide, I've already understood that I have a lot of traffic using uh, the mobile devices. And not surprisingly at all, the very uh, the most common browser used for visiting my website is Android WebView, which is definitely a browser for, for mobile. And then there's Chrome, which is basically a hybrid browser. So I don't think I can say anything specific about it because it's also on, it's both on mobile and on desktop devices. So that's somewhere in between, but it's still performing well. So it's, it still brings me a lot of sessions. And then there's Safari in app, which is basically, um, which is basically the iOS users, which have a Safari uh, browser, and they just click on on the Facebook post or so, and it just opens uh, a small window where you can read the post. And Samsung Internet, another mobile, uh, another mobile um, device, and Safari and Firefox less less frequent for for my audience. How about the channels? That's something that I wanted to say because um, as my arguments already stated, I have a lot of social traffic and here it is. It is also confirmed from the data. Most of my traffic comes from uh, social media. And then there are some people um, that land on my on my blog using direct. So they just type the um, they just type the um, the full address in the browser. And there are also some people who landed on my blog using organic search. And that's quite interesting. I didn't at the beginning I didn't think I will uh, I would reach to any of those people, but that's really, really nice. But unfortunately, um, I, I cannot see in here um, what did they type to land on my blog or anything. How did they, how did they actually land on my blog? How, how did they search me? And that's something that I will also need to investigate further. I think, um, I think there are also some packages for doing that. And there's also uh, Google Search Console, which I think I will be investigating further because I want to understand where this came people came from. Cool. Uh, that was just the descriptive part. And so I've been saying that social traffic, I have a lot of social traffic from social media and a lot of mobile devices. And my question, my next question was, does actually social meet social traffic comes from mobile devices? And I've been looking at the data, of course, by channel and device. And I've been looking only at the users because I was interested in seeing how many people actually uh, landed on my blog. And indeed, it seems like the social, um, the social traffic came from mobile. We can see it in here is the larger, larger bar, but also from, from desktop. I will basically ignore the tablets since there are very few and definitely not enough to, to bring any, any insightful information. And there's also something interesting that I understood when looking at this plot is that um, you can see that the direct traffic is basically pretty much the same on both mobile and desktop. So that doesn't, doesn't um, the direct traffic isn't driven by a specific type of device, a specific category of, of device. So yeah, a lot of a lot of tra social traffic comes from from the mobile devices, exactly as I would have anticipated. 
and something else. So I thought about this I when I started the blog, when Ines brought the challenge in, actually, I was also thinking about whether I should be writing in Romanian or in English. And my very first, uh, my very first thought is that I should be writing in Romanian because I'm very confident at it. But then I said, maybe I will get any, some international exposure if I will write in English. So that's why this came, question actually came up. And yeah, of course, um, a lot of my users uh, come from Romania. Uh, it's, it's not something that strikes me. I was anticipating this because I'm sharing my blog across um, my social networks, which are mostly, um, mostly of Romanian people. So that's, that's not, nothing surprisingly and also some people actually reshared my post so still across romanian people but there are still quite a few countries that i've been reaching and i was really surprised to to find out so here's the full list i will basically ignore the the last one from from the bottom uh, just having one session from a country doesn't actually say that you have reached that country not from my perspective but I still have some colleagues and friends in the United States, in the United Kingdom, in Germany, in Belgium, and so on. So yeah, I, I think I've been I've been reaching some countries, and that's really really nice to to see them happening. Um, okay, that was the descriptive part, and. Um, moving further, I just wanted to understand some more things. Uh, just I just did some simple analysis based on, on the data that I had um, described already. And one of the things that I wanted to reveal was that um, which are actually the mobile browsers versus the desktop browsers. I just wanted to see how those ones link in between. So tablets in here, this is, let me introduce you further. Um, this is a correspondence analysis. It basically uh, allows us to understand associations or correlations in between uh, categorical variables. And as you can see, I've been plotting in here the um, device category mobile, desktop, and tablet, and the browser, um, all those uh, six or seven browsers that I've been um, having from, from Google Analytics. And here's how the plot looks like. So basically, when you're interpreting something like this, you just want to be as further as possible from the origin. The origin actually um, tells you the average behavior. Um, and the categories that are basically grouped together are associated together and are very similar to each other. So I will skip tablet. It's definitely an outlier and I've been noticing that so far. Um, and here are the mobile browsers, of course, all of them, Safari in app, Samsung internet and Android web view, all associated with mobile users. I'm 100% positive that this is correct. And then I have here three, three browsers, Firefox, Edge, and Opera, which are, if I'm not mistaken, I think they are Windows browsers. And they are mostly associated with the desktop, as, as we can see, they are closer to, to desktop. And there are two more browsers, which I call them slightly hybrid, because both Safari and Chrome are available uh, on, um, on both mobile and desktop, and they are in between somehow. But indeed, they are mostly associated with, um, with desktop um, sessions. Yeah, so basically here are, if I'm, if I'm reading this correctly, I can say that here are my um, Android mobile users. I have here the iOS ones. I have here the Windows desktop um, users and there's somewhere in between, some, some people in between which are somewhere in, in between mobile and, and desktop. Uh, that's because I didn't actually want to, I didn't remember which of those uh, were correlated with each other. 
And there's one more question, a very interesting one that I wanted to emphasize and uh, to reveal. When do people read more? So I've been using also a correspondence analysis. I'll also uh, zoom into that. Um, what I did here was basically I took the average session time. So uh, that means how much time a person spent on my blog. And that was an average. Um, and I've been categorizing it. I've been looking at the data and I understood there are quite some users that maybe they just click at random. And I just um, categorized their average session time as under two seconds. That's definitely someone who just opened the page and just closed it because it, was, it, it didn't find anything uh, interesting for, for him. And then I added another category uh, between two and three, 30 seconds, um, which I said are, it's reasonable and it's reasonable for the people who just open a link, open the link with my blog and they just eyeball at the charts. So they just want to see pretty pictures in there and understand the picture just from, understand the, the overall story just from looking at the chart. So maybe those, um, that's the time spent in here. And there's maybe I would say the average reader on my blog. I think I've been looking at, um, I've been looking at how much time it actually requires to read one of my blog posts. And I think it's somewhere less than five minutes, but I've been, um, um, I went a bit above. So I just added a, a category from 30 seconds to seven minutes. Let's say seven minutes, it's more than enough to read or double read the story, double check the charts and so on. And there's also a category in here of heavy readers that spend above seven minutes on, um, on my website, on my blog. Maybe it's because they want to read everything. Maybe it's because they are just paying attention to every post, every post in particular and so on. But it's really interesting. I think those ones are the heavy readers. But at the same time, I think there's also a drawback. So there, there might be some people in there that actually forgot their tab open. For instance, you're on a desktop and you just read something and then you move on from the desktop and you come back two hours later that doesn't actually mean you're um, you're a heavy reader but it just went um, it just goes here so here's here's what i did with the data and of course i've been looking at the second uh, at the second variable which is uh day of week so okay Here's what I found out. Under two seconds, maybe that happens all the time. It's not particularly associated with any day of the week. So that doesn't really, um, really matter. Then there's this category of average users in between which spent um, in between 30 seconds and seven minutes on my blog reading the, uh, reading the stories. And that's mostly associated with Wednesday. So the average user comes on my blog on Wednesday. That's interesting. Or maybe on Thursday, but it's not so close to that, I would say, on, on Wednesday. And of course, if I'm looking at the so-called heavy readers or um, um, the people who really, really spend some time on my blog, those are associated with Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday, and Monday, but Monday, it's basically across everywhere. I've been looking at the data, and um, I have quite some spikes on Monday, which I've been uh, revealing earlier. But yeah, I think a, a heavy a heavy reader, the people who, who spend a lot of time on, on my blog, uh, comes on Tuesday, on Friday, and on Monday. <clears throat> That's quite interesting, uh, Simona. 
uh, I mean the, the dates that uh, revealed your uh, your analysis it's like uh, you know ending uh, the effort because you have Sunday you end the weekend of course it's not uh, but Friday and Tuesday I would say they are two two step Tuesday you usually start your uh, working uh, week on Monday you work a lot to Tuesday you almost uh, do also a lot of things and somehow you you prepare yourself to say this was a week more or less yeah so you are more uh, more focused on let's see what uh, what's on social media what uh, what can we see on uh, on blogs and so on and probably sunday it's also such uh, such step yeah i would like i would your... totally agree with monday and friday i think everyone's having a hard Monday and they just want to have a break you know maybe let's read something for like five minutes and on Friday everyone's waiting for the weekend and maybe just postpone some work for later and just go and read my blog at some moment during the day it's just five minutes maybe above seven minutes sorry it's maybe just 10 minutes just 10 minutes of your time and you're just preparing for the weekend and okay maybe maybe reading something will cheer me up today so that that's really interesting I was like, actually I, I'm surprised by the results but I think they're really really insightful maybe you can also think about you know uh, a topic that you could use like uh, seven minutes for Friday and you reveal something yeah that's a nice <laughs> idea that's a really nice idea <laughs> Yeah, that's quite an interesting uh, analysis that you you did for for uh, delivering this uh, this insight. I, I really I find it really uh, interesting. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I think that was all. I just wanted to sum up to just a few further steps that I would need to overtake uh, further. Um, so first of all, I've been noticing that there are quite a few um, users that land on my blog using mobile devices. So I definitely need to improve the mobile user experience and across all browsers specifically um, that I underlined uh, previously on for mobile devices. So that's definitely something that I need to do. I think I think I've been doing that earlier because I've had some issues with hyphenation on, on my blog. So I, I did that previously, but I will need to, to dig into, into this any further. Um, of course, if Monday and Friday are popular days for people to read, to land on my blog, I need to, to make sure um, I will post further on Monday and Friday or Friday actually, because I, I don't have enough time to do them both at the same time. Um, I need to continue to frequently share uh, my, my blog post on social media. It's definitely something that I found out right now. A lot of the traffic comes from, from the social channel, so I need to be involved more in social media. Um, I also need to improve the homepage for encouraging people to, to visit again the blog. If it's definitely one of the popular pages on, on my blog, I need to improve it and I need to make sure that people will see the homepage and will, will want to come back. And that's something that will drive hopefully some loyalty for, 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 my, for my readers. And Another thing that maybe I will investigate further in a, pre in a future analysis is I need to take a look at the performance of each post because um, I need to understand in which direction I need to go, in which direction I need to write, to write about what, what's, what's interesting, what makes people read my blog actually. So I need to do, to do that for, for each post in particular. And of course, the very last one, and I think the very important one in here, keep blogging and don't stop. That was all from my side. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, I, I have a first uh, question until uh, our uh, uh, participants will uh, start uh, asking. Uh, can you share us uh, the blog? Because I know it's an R blog with R bind directory. So maybe 
it's also uh, an opportunity for uh, for people that see this uh, presentation to to be encouraged to to build on uh, blogging okay. i can also leave it down yeah. here in the comments here is my blog uh, i've been writing about the science of dating of course i just the very main um the very main purpose of it was trying to reveal some insights from how the dating is actually going on nowadays and um it's indeed it's in it's 100 percent uh built with r with hugo and um shared on github and netlify and the very main purpose of it was to use my data visualization and storytelling skills into something that I like. So I'm building everything with ggplot and markdown and it's a lot of our stuff, um, but I really like it. So here's how it looks. So the graphs are uh, amazing. Thank you. I'm, I'm doing a lot of research on the charts, um, so. Let's do it like this. Let's see how my how my very first ggplot was looking like. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see some progress. So this was a very first one. Um, so these graphs are um, built entirely with uh, ggplot, right? Ggplot, yeah, mm -hmm. one hundred percent ggplot. And then I try to evolve them. Yeah. And you have a a, a specific temp template or palette of colors colors which you you prefer or do you use i don't know i remember the, you told us in a previous meetup i think about the veridis package yes i love veridis it's a color pack uh, palette and, and package but i'm also playing around some other things so mm -hmm. i'm a huge fan of veridis if you looked at my presentation i think it had only veridis colors <laughs> um but sometimes I'm also playing with colors. I had a post about Christmas. So I just researched about the colors that I wanted to use. And I fell in love with this red, <laughs> red and green. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, I was, uh, I was thinking on the, on the color because it's a, a special, uh, how you say, uh, I do the, the, <laughs> yeah, it's a um, RGB, whatever. Da. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Color code. <laughs> Color code, yeah, yeah. Color code. So I encourage you to um, uh, unmute yourself and ask the question. You can also write them on the on the chat. Um, we are, um, let's say, a bit ahead. So we we can uh, use this um, opportunity. I will uh, close the recording so you can feel comfortable uh, asking questions. I I want to thank you again, uh, Simona. This is the video that will be uh, published. So now I will 